Okay, I'm going to try back to back casts with the uh, hollow pointed 9mm. Uh, let me put my glove on so I don't burn the crap out of myself. Uh, one second. Try to do it as quickly as possible. I'm also going to try to manually hold down this, this screw plate because uh, if I'm getting flashing on the top, it's causing the. Uh, shit. It's causing the. The top edge of the mouth of the bullet cavity to uh, it's causing the top of the mouth of the cavity to degrade uh, sooner than it normally would. So, yeah, that's more like it. I'm getting a nice flat um, base there, just the way it's supposed to be. I let it set for so long that it started to cool off. This looks like shit right here. I think phase two of this, or phase, I don't, I've lost count how many phases I've gone through. This is my third casting session, and my fourth or fifth iteration of this mold. I'm going to have to figure out a way to uh, keep that sprue... Yeah. Keep the sprue lid tight against the top face of the mold. That's what's causing that uh, deterioration of the top edge. This one here is still in decent shape, but if if lead gets in between this face and the underside of the mold uh, of the lid, then uh, it starts to create havoc on the uh, the top edge of that lid or the cavity mouth, I should say. Second. Yeah, that's nice and flat, just as it should be. That's a good bullet right there. Notice that there's very, very little flashing on the edges. I mean, one side is more visible than the other, but just barely. That's a good thing. Okay. Damn these gloves, man. It makes it impossible to work quickly. The slower I go, the faster or the longer the, the mold has time to cool off. Whoa! <laughs> Burnt the shit out of my finger. I guess there's no getting around it. I get to wear the gloves. Even if it takes longer to pour each, each cast. Learn from this, children. <laughs> I'm going to have to spot weld these little movable arms on this pair of pliers. It all conspires against you. This is number two. I'm just trying to push down as hard as I can on that lid before I start spinning it around. Um, hoping that that would be enough to give me a flat base with no damage to the top of the sprue. Okay, there's another one. I'm going to... I'll measure these once I get done casting these so, so we all know what it came out as. Um, man, I... I don't want anybody to lose sight of the fact that I'm casting bullets with a 3D printed mold, okay? And uh, whether they come out perfect or not, the fact is I'm casting bullets with a 3D printed mold. There will always be bugs to work out. Okay. 
Okay. This is number three in a row out of this. Uh, you see that? That's what I'm talking about, getting lead flashing in between the, the lid and the, uh, the mold. This is actually, I'd rather have this than, than the way I was having it, because before, I just got a little bit of flashing, and when I spun, wow, that was a good bullet underneath, though. When I spun that screw, screw lid around, it would, uh... On each of these bullets, on one side of the seam line, there's a faintest hint of a seam line. On the other side, there's no no seam line whatsoever. So uh, uh, I'm slowly dialing in my dimensions. Although I think this is this here is going to work. I'll do one more on this back to back. And again, take note, please, that uh, I'm casting more than just one bullet and the and the the mold is no longer usable. What is that like? Six or seven casts already. The mold itself knows it doesn't show any signs of wear. Although that first mold, like I showed you before, was beginning to show signs of wear. Oh yeah, this one here. I shouldn't have said that. I just put the whammy on myself. The top edge here. I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing the top, very top edges of the the mold mouth on this side is starting to to show signs of uh, flaking away. So that's something else I'll have to work on. But I was able to fix fix the erosion problem on the inside seam line or seam lines of the uh, the mold cavities. Uh, I'm more than just a little bit sure that. I can fix this also with some judicious sanding. This one will have flashing around the top edge too because, uh, well, it's not that bad actually. But it did fill in that void that was that the chipping away the lead was starting to show. But this is four in a row. Got a little bit of flashing down the, the nose of the hollow point. Funny that this half looks to be in pristine condition, except for the top edge there. Actually, well, I'm starting to see very faint signs of that that horizontal striation kind of erosion on this one here it printed over onto this uh, onto the bullet surface too but uh i think i'm starting to get the get the numbers dialed in the temperatures dialed in and uh i guess i should check the temperature on this i never did that you know six hundred and forty one degrees so that's not too much hotter than the base melting point of lead. That's where I wanted it. Okay, I'm gonna do back to back 45 hollow points. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go with 45 hollow point. Base on that one looks pretty good. Actually, the whole bullet looks pretty darn good. Can you see it? Barely visible seam lines. Um, if I remember correct, or if I remember, I'm going to go inside and. Uh, damn, I can't get that screw out of that hollow point. I got a ton of 45 caliber bullets that I cast a long time ago that still have to be used. Which stem do I have in there? No, I got that one. That should come out. There. 
There it is right there. So we've got a good good flat base, nice and clean. You know, I really thought the 45s would give me problems because they're it's more lead, which takes longer to cool, which would uh, subject the mold to a longer period of heat. But man, they're these don't even have the the kind of uh, frosty look that the last batch of nine millimeters had. So. Uh, I'm happy on that respect. Too Sorry bad everyone, mouth. I thought my camera was running on that that fourth cast and uh, I wondered why my phone was beeping. It was telling me that it was out of memory. So uh, I switched over to my other cell phone. This is number four here. It turned out real nice. Nice space. The mold itself is in decent shape. I mean I can keep on casting with it, but I just don't see the point. But I will cast one more out of it because uh, I deprived you of cast number four. Come on, baby. Come out of there. Holy crap, this is hard. I left it on there too long and it was shrank down and hugging this hollow pointing stem. Okay. This is cast number five with the 45 caliber. I mean, five in a row, not counting the first four or five that I did on camera. And the mold itself is still none the worse for wear. Again, this is the 45 caliber hollow point that I screwed the hollow point shaft on. <laughs> Gave myself the shaft. So it would appear that if you can get a good rhythm going and keep the keep the mold itself at a certain temperature from that rhythm, uh, then you get good bullets out of it. I found that I, if I start turning that sprue plate, that sprue cutting plate immediately after I pour it that sprue just cuts right off cleanly damn that's a nice looking bullet right there I hope I can find some way to lighten up the the image on this I'm gonna have to figure out how to simplify removing this hollow point stem on there I think I just put some uh they call it uh, mold release for high temperature purposes. But damn it. Oh well, I'm just going to let it cool off on there. I've proven my point. I can cast multiple times with these 3D printed molds. And uh, the 45 caliber, I'm looking at both halves of them, and both halves look about the same meaning that uh, there's no horizontal striations from the erosion that I was getting with the 9mm before. Um, whereas the 9mm, this is a good half. Yeah. these There's horizontal striations where it's starting to erode inside the cavity. The funny thing is the edges that were eroding before are not doing that, but the inside edges are. Uh, especially along the top edge here um, and that was because I wasn't able to get the sprue I didn't take pains to get a flat you know uh, a perfectly flat surface to first surface bond 
and it was allowing some lead sprue uh, some lead uh, what do you call that shit yeah lead flashing to get up in between there when I spun that around it would just chip the crap out of the mouth of that edge and that was the weak point of this nine millimeter uh, that will be addressed the next time around and uh, the hollow point at nine millimeter that also showed the striations on one half of the mold while being good on the other half of the mold. I think that uh, if I would have stuck to my original plan of placing them flat on a surface and pouring them as they were flat, that lead would have dropped straight down in there and uh, maybe mitigated that, but I, I, it's something to work on. Again, I'm gonna harp on this. Uh, my reason for doing this was to show everybody that you can cast bullets using 3D printed bullet molds, okay? And uh, uh, this is the fourth time around, even though the first two or three times didn't give me perfectly symmetrical bullets, perfectly uh, surface finished bullets. The fact is I was able to cast, bu cast bullets with molten lead using 3D printed molds. Uh, I'm gonna cast a few more 45s and then, uh, here, let me show you something else. I don't know if I edited this part out earlier or not, but uh, one of the molds that I made with what I thought was the last of my Sariotech Ultra White resin was uh, these here. And let's see. Yeah, I wanted to put sinkers or put weight on my hooks. So uh, I set this up like this, set my hooks in there, Shit. Set my hooks in there and it casts these right on there. I still got to clip this this off, but uh, I got what I wanted out of this. This also needs some tweaking to get it right the first or the second, third time. But uh, now I know it works, so I can work on it, and I will never have to buy these pre-made weighted jig hooks again. Okay, I'll be back with those still photographs 